Terrace. Oh, cool, oh, okay. awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, um, he gave me one of his pieces that has some of those mm -hmm. printed where it looks like UFOs and helicopters, mm -hmm. and it's very strange. Yeah, there's a lot of great um, uh, cave art and uh, early Renaissance paintings that feature you know, UFOs. It's imagery. true. It's very um, true. It makes you wonder. Yeah. And again, I, I have no problem believing that somebody could have painted what they saw in the sky because, again, yeah. I think this thing has been with us. Uh, so we have a caller from Stephenville. This should be oh, interesting. Right. Hello, caller. Are you there? Hello? Hello. Hi. Hey, Sarah. How are you doing? This is Fine. Fun. How are you? Pretty good. This is you good. Um, so I thought I would just share one of my paranormal experiences here in uh, <laughs> Stephenville, Texas. Um, we've actually had quite a lot here lately. Um, about January, mid-January, me and my uh, best friend, we were walking outside. It was nighttime. And um, <laughs> we saw this weird light in the sky. And we're watching it, and all of a sudden, it goes in three parts. And they start flying towards each other and then away from each other and then back towards each other. And then it goes back into one bright, giant light. And then it disappeared. And right about this, me and my best friend, we're freaking out. And, <laughs> and um, my brother called right about the time I was going to uh, call my dad to come out and be like, hey, dude, we just saw something. We just saw something. And my brother called, and he's like, did you guys see that? Did you guys see that? And we're, we're all freaking out, like, yeah, we just saw it. And uh, it was really interesting because it was, it was in the sky for no more than a minute, and then it was gone. Wow. Is, is, uh, that, is that the one that they put in the paper that they had an article about or something? No, the one that they put in the article was there was a football game going on. I think this oh. was, Renee, when was that? Uh, um, it was a couple things after that. And um, there was a football game going on, and all of a sudden everyone looks up and sees these giant bright lights same as I saw, and they went back and forth and back and forth, and uh, and then um, it was in the newspaper the next day because there was a whole bunch of other sightings from other people who weren't at the football game. It was it was really interesting because my brother called me when he saw it as well, and it was this, it was this huge ordeal. Everyone, <laughs> the whole town's freaking out, going like, "What's going on?" Wow. Yeah, I heard about that. I, I've never seen a UFO, but I, I or what she's talking about. I would love to. Yeah. I know a lot of people that have. I just haven't yet. <laughs> um, even in Saudi Arabia, where I live, uh, me and my best friend saw something. And uh, it was incredibly close to us. It was incredibly close to us, and we didn't hear a sound. There were multicolored lights on it, and he and I were freaking out. <laughs> we were like, because uh, we watched it hover over the houses. Wow. And it was, it was. I, I can't even describe it. It was it was eerie, it was freaky, it was downright scary. Well, what shape was it? It was in a it was like in a circular rectangular shape. It was like it had it had a long body but round edges. Huh. So like a, a tube maybe? Like the cigar right? shape? Like a cigar shape or Yeah, but way fatter. Okay. Wow. And uh, was the light casting could you see light reflected on the houses? No. Wow. Not at all. There was no reflection. We couldn't see anything that was holding up the light. We could only see the light. Hmm. And it was no farther than 50 feet away from us. And how long did you wow, see it? Wow, that's amazing. We watched it for a good 10 minutes. Whoa. Did we sat we? there and watched it go from... This, I'm gonna, it, it, they're called jebels over there, but these, they're like rocky, sandy hill things. And we watched it go from there all the way over to the houses to the other side of where I live, and then it disappeared. Wow. That's wild. You didn't have any missing time, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I don't know. And, and, uh, there was another witness with you? Yes. Did so, I mean, if I'd been out there alone, I would have been like, no, I never saw it. No, I didn't see that. <laughs> do, you, do you 
remember if there was any talk in the news uh, the next day? Any other people report it, perhaps? No. Oh, darn. It was like three, because it was in Saudi Arabia, and it was like 3 o'clock in the morning. And when I live, like, everyone goes to bed at 10 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> And um, didn't make any noise, I guess, so no one... Nobody thought to wake up. Anything. I, we wouldn't have noticed it if there wasn't any lights on it. Wow. It was so quiet. That's wild. Well, well maybe you can start carrying a camera. Yeah, right. Like, I know, right? <laughs> I, I actually have it. my cameras. <laughs> well, we have a friend who, she was going to Johnson City, kind of in that area. And uh, actually, Fredericksburg. Yeah, and was Fredericksburg. Um, she saw something. And then she had some missing time as well. And yeah, yeah when she crazy. saw it, she, yeah, they had missing time. Like I think like an hour. An hour or something, wow. and it was crazy. Well, something crazy like that. She's still like it was her and her friend. She's still like it still throws well, her off. At least she didn't have missing time, yeah. Molly, because that would really freak yeah. you out. <laughs> oh Lord. Oh man. Well, thank well, you. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for so having me much on. for calling. Right Yay. <laughs> watch this guys. Anytime. All right. Watch yeah, this watch watch tonight. You too. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Bye. That was cool. That's interesting. Yeah, see, I would love to really see something like that, but I think I would definitely have to change underwear. Scary. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I know Moses, though he used to call here. Moses yeah. calls If you're sometimes. watching. Yeah. <laughs> we, we like you, Moses. Anyway, he was talking about driving along the road, and he like had something come over his car. It was him and his yeah. friend. And uh, kind of followed him for a while. And I, I, if I remember yeah, correctly, all... they just left. Yeah. The, yeah. But the they saw, UFO was it triangle left. shape? Yeah. It and like it had lights. It was really interesting, yeah. like his story about it. Yeah, I wish I'd have a sighting like that. Yeah. yeah. Minor, a little then all identifiable uh, uh, at least eventually. eventually maybe you should take a trip to, towards Fredericksburg or Stephenville there you know one. there you go there you are, yeah. yeah um so what do you think about like crop circles and things like that what what's your take um, on all that I find uh, the the crop circles again are another thing that got me very excited when I started researching it um, um, I, it's another example where I think there's a lot of prosaic explanation, but there does seem to be a core phenomenon that seems to be anomalous. Um, um, I, I, I think be, we keep, beyond a shadow of a doubt, there are groups of people who aren't just making them, but seem to be competing with each other artistically. Uh. But some of those people actually aren't doing it to hoax other humans. They're, they're doing it because they think that they're going to communicate with oh, okay. extraterrestrials or whoever mm -hmm. is making the ones that they're not making. Um, so I think there's a lot of different things going on there, but um, there's there's a guy named Dr. Stephen, I think uh, Dr. Levengood, Levengood's his last name, and he was trying to do some uh, good science-based research where he was getting samples from inside the circles and from outside the circles as a control and testing them, and he, that's, he was the guy who found that it appeared that these had been subjected to high heat and probably microwave energy that was causing wow. um, the nodes uh, in the stalks to expand and burst in some cases, but, all, but usually instead of bursting, just causing them to, to bend. bend over. And so there was some speculation that, you know, what is there extraterrestrial or human technology at work here? That right. I mean, that's the, the assumption by most is that it's extraterrestrial um, technology. But then there's a, because some, some are folks, so big. Yeah, um, I mean, but the, the the ones that are I mean, again, there's there are teams of these people who have been documented. I mean, and everybody's like, well, how can they make them so precise? And how can they do it at night? They've done it. They've done crop circle making contests where part of the contest was you had they had like decibel meters around. The, the, the playing area, and like if you went above a certain decibel level, you made too much noise, you were disqualified. Uh, wow. And they were really amazed at the level of ability of these different people, and there's people who do it professionally now, they do it for advertising. Oh my gosh. Um, but again, I think there, there does seem to be a core phenomena there that, that, that A, predates the modern uh, interest uh, in it, and the, f and the focus and the hoopla, but um, most of those were more traditional just circles as opposed to the, the, the fancy the inter intricate pictograms and yeah. that sort of thing. Um, there you know there's been a lot of accusations uh, of, of mili uh, British military monitoring 